Shalom, Shalom family, and welcome to our channel, Manna for Battle, where we literally eat spiritual food provided by Yahuwah. And if the food you're eating doesn't look right, doesn't smell right, or doesn't taste right, then most likely you're eating at the wrong table. Join us and eat the spiritual manna straight from Yahuwah that will nourish your earthly body, lead you to Yeshua, who will take you straight to the Heavenly Father and your celestial one. Now let's prepare for battle. Shalom, shalom family. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of the heaven and the earth and all that is in them, Hear the prayer of your daughter, a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, forgive our sins and the sins of our ancestors. We have committed great abominations against you. Remove the scales from our eyes that we may see clearly to understand your words as they lead us safely home to you. Selah. Hear the words of the Most High. In Psalms chapter 63, in part, verse 3 through 11. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as marrow with fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul follows hard after you. Your right hand upholds me, but those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be portioned for the foxes, but the king shall rejoice in power. Every one that swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. All praises to the most high power. The spiritual and supernatural history of our ancestors has been hidden, misinterpreted, stifled or never taught at all. Consider the Holy Spirit within us. She is our direct line and our connection back to the Most High Power. Because of the lies taught through the precepts of men, some never grasp that the Spirit within us is already eternal. I'm going to say that again. The Spirit that is within us is already eternal. You see that? But eternal life is to know the Father in His Son. Hear the words of the Most High in John chapter 17, verse 3. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true power, and Yeshua HaMashiach, whom you have sent. All others whose spirits are eternal, who don't know our Heavenly Father and His Son, are destined to eternal hellfire and damnation. In love, family, we must truly study and show ourselves approved. The Most High wants to have a personal relationship with all His children and utilizes many methods to communicate with us. Many of us who are spiritual have suppressed our spiritual knowledge due to the precepts of men and the fear of the rejection of others. Consider this. Over 20 years ago, the Holy Spirit revealed that the Valley of the Dry Bones was a true story. Though others didn't agree with this belief, my view never changed. Remember family, if the Most High reveals something to you, just stand in faith, it will manifest. Now grab your Bibles and let's prepare for battle. We stated that the Holy Spirit revealed the Valley of the Dry Bones was a true story. So let's search this matter out, beginning with a summary of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 14. The prophet Ezekiel was taken in the spirit by the Most High to a valley full of very dry bones. And the Most High said to him, Can these bones live? And Ezekiel replied, Only you know, Father. The Father then told Ezekiel to prophesy unto the bones, speaking, Thus saith the Most High. 
And Ezekiel told the bones, Hear the words of the Most High. The Most High will cause breath to enter you, and you will live. And sinos and flesh came upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then Ezekiel said, Thus saith the Most High unto you bones, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you will live. And then there was a great noise, as the bones started to rattle and shake. And Ezekiel called to the four winds and said, Thus saith the Most High Power, Come, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. As the breath came upon them, they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army, and they lived. Then the father said, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have said our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. Prophesy to them and say, The Most High will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And then you will know he is the Most High power, and he shall put his spirit in you, and you will live, and the Most High will place you in your own land. Then you will know the Most High has spoken it and performed it. And Ezekiel did all that he was told. All praises to the Most High. We have heard many revelations about this mystery over the years. Some say these verses are a symbolic representation of Israel in their captivity without the living water, which is the word. Others say it is symbolic of Israel as the walking dead without the Holy Spirit. Wait, I have a question. How can we know which revelation is true? Well, that's easy. The one that bears witness with your spirit. Hear the words of the Most High in John chapter 16 verse 13 summarized. When the spirit of truth comes, she will guide you into all truth. She will not speak on her own, but only of what she has heard, and she will show you things to come. You see that? The deceiver has hidden spiritual and supernatural knowledge about our Father, which in my opinion weakens our faith by downplaying the supernatural abilities of the Father. With that being said, let us lift one another with this newly gained knowledge about our ancestor Ezekiel and witness the supernatural abilities the Father gave him in the second volume of the Pseudepigrapha, The Lives of the Prophets, chapter 3, verse 1 through 19, summarized. Ezekiel died in the land of the Chaldeans during captivity. The ruler of the people of Israel had him killed because he continuously reproved them about their worship of graven images and idols. While in captivity, Ezekiel performed miraculous works to help our people during their oppression. For example, when the oppressors saw multitudes of people flock to Ezekiel, the fear of rebellion made them deathly afraid and they sought many ways to destroy our nation. You see that? Nothing new under the sun. The oppressor does not like us to unite family. They become very fearful. When Ezekiel and our people were gathered by the water and the oppressors attempt to slay the masses, Ezekiel would part the waters just like in Egypt and our people ran through to the other side. If the oppressors pursued them, they would drown. Anytime the enemy attempt to kill our people, Ezekiel would run boldly upon them and terrify them with wonders, signs, and omens, and the destruction immediately ceased. If there was no food, Ezekiel would pray, and the Father would furnish them with an abundance of fish. And in the wonder of the dead bones, he persuaded Israel to have hope both here and in the coming age. During captivity in the land of the Chaldeans, Ezekiel would be snatched up and taken to Jerusalem to rebuke the faithless. He pronounced judgment on the tribe of Dan and Gad because they were persecuting those that kept the law of the Most High, and he sent snakes to devour their infants and all their flocks. The one that killed Ezekiel was one of them. Wait, stop. So someone from the tribe of Dan or Gad killed Ezekiel? Hmm, but let's stay focused and search deeper in the book of the Legends of the Jews, Volume 4, to find out more about these dry bones. The same time Ezekiel restored the dead to life, 
three men were redeemed from the fiery furnace. And we know that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But let's continue. Those the Most High restored were from different classes of persons. Some were the Ephraimites that had perished in the attempt to escape from Egypt before Moses led the whole nation out of the land of bondage. Others were the godlets among the Jews that had polluted the temple at Jerusalem with heathen rites. Along with those, still more godless, who in life had not believed in the resurrection of the dead. Wait, I have a question. Ezekiel resurrected people before the Messiah? Yes, yes he did, with the power of the Most High. But let's continue. Ezekiel also revived many handsome youths that were slaughtered because of the heathen women who were obsessed with our youth. Hmm, it's sad to say, family, but this still happens till this day. Many of our ancestors that worshipped the idols of Babylon, if they were caught and found guilty, were put to death. Nebuchadnezzar's idol was at the Valley of Dora, which we know as the Valley of the Dry Bones. And at the solicitation of idol worship, he brought the idolaters forward and shouted, You know that your power can help and save. Nevertheless, you pay worship to an idol which is incapable of doing anything. This proves that you have destroyed your own land by your wicked deeds, and now you are attempting to destroy mine through your iniquity. Then 60,000 Jews who were idolaters were slain in that valley. Ezekiel was given a vision in which the Most High bade him to repair the Valley of Dora. It was here that Ezekiel was asked, Could those dry bones live? And the Most High dropped the dew of heaven upon the dry bones, and Sino's flesh and skin were placed upon the bones. At the same time, the Most High sent forth winds from the four corners of the earth, which unlocked the treasure houses of souls and brought back each soul to its own body. You see that? All came to life except one man, which the Most High told Ezekiel, this man was a usurer. In spite of the marvelous miracle, the men restored to life wept because they feared they would have no share at the end of time in the resurrection of the whole Israel. I'm going to read that again. The men restored to life wept because they feared they would have no share at the end of time in the resurrection of the whole of Israel. But the prophet Ezekiel assured them in the name of the Most High Power that their portion and all that had been promised to Israel would in no wise be diminished. All praises to the Most High Power. Family, never fear to believe the unbelievable when thinking about the Most High Power. Most likely, your thoughts are right. The Most High can do anything and all things that are hidden in the dark will surely be brought to the light. Shalom family, and thank you. Family, I pray this lesson has edified your soul and spirit and brings you peace. Always, always, always seek Yah first and pray without ceasing. Remember, John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. But the hour cometh, and now it is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. And be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of my next video. Thank you.